us about these six thrillers that you have published. Um, I have um, three standalones, um, Intern, Killer Body, Double Exposure, and then I have a series, a mass market series, as you mentioned, featuring Jerry LaRue, the hearing impaired reporter. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, what sort of struggle did it take for you to write your first book? To get published as a, as uh -huh. a fiction writer? Oh, mm -hmm. I did everything wrong. <laughs> uh, there's no student I've ever taught who has ever done something I didn't do. I did everything wrong. And it took years. It really took years. It took years to learn the craft because there weren't classes the, the, the way there are now. There weren't author link classes. There wasn't an author link. There may not have been a Doris Booth when I oh, started writing. No. <laughs> and uh, so, yes, it, it was really a struggle. It was a struggle to learn craft. That was my biggest problem. Well, now, your first uh, big novel, really, your, your big one, uh, I know that you published um, several times before, but your first big novel, Intern, was published by Mira in 2003. What prepared you to write that thriller? Uh, I didn't know I was writing a thriller. If I had known I was writing a thriller, I would have been too scared to write it. So I wrote the book that was in me. I wrote the book that I wanted to write, and it was about um, the older woman, younger uh, younger woman, older man, love affair thing, which has always interested me because it's been part of my own life for so long. And so um, I wrote the book, and yes, there was a, a, a murder in it, and my agent looked at it and said, oh, a political thriller. <laughs> um, it helped, too, that at that time I got an excellent literary agent. Ah, oh, that's good. And that's so good. she really helped me. She's a career, a career strategist as well as an agent. And so she said, okay, I got you two, three book deals for thrillers. So then I, I was a, a thriller writer, right. you know, and I'd always yeah. like to read them. Yeah. So uh, I, I read a lot of thrillers and a lot of literary fiction. Those are the two areas I really enjoy. How hard is it for you to sit down and write a novel? Um, to sit down is the hard part. <laughs> Once you're <laughs> rolling, you, um, so you got to make yourself sit down. It's like going to the gym. The hardest <laughs> thing is putting on your clothes and getting in the car. Well, what are the three major mistakes you, you see writers make? I think the biggest mistake, and it was a mistake that I made, um, was not knowing what you're writing. Uh, not knowing what the market is. Not knowing that this is a business. And you just can't write a fictionalized version of your life and expect somebody to hand you a big fat check for it. Um, that was the major problem I had. I didn't understand that you have to have a certain place in the bookstore and that you have to know what it is you're writing because that determines how long your book is. A thriller is bigger than a mystery usually. Um, you really have to know and you really have to read. You wanted three reasons. The second is probably character. They probably don't have good uh, sympathetic characters, which is very, very important. Third is probably not knowing how to write a scene and understanding point of view. I see. Well, now you're known for giving your advanced novel writing students a lot of solid guidance for improving their writing. Give us a secret or two. As for what I would tell a, a student? A secret or two um, that would help them get started as a new writer. What, for example, are the essential elements of crafting a good story? Uh, character, character, and character. <laughs> uh, don't think, oh, I'm going to write a story about this Martian who came to Earth and married a woman. I want to know about the Martian. What's his, what's his astrological sign? What's his birthday? What does he want? Uh, what's the hole in that Martian's life? You really have to have external and internal conflict. You have to know that, that character, no matter what he is. And most people stop before they develop sympathetic characters. A sympathetic character has to be proactive, can't be a villain, and needs to be sympathetic. And until you've really done that, all the wonderful plot ideas in the world and all the Martians in the world are not going to help you publish that book. Well, now you talk a lot in your courses about the importance of linking focused scenes. What do you mean? It comes down to the old basic uh, showing versus telling. That you really, um, Vonnegut said that your character has to want something in every scene, even if it's just a glass of water. Mm -hmm. And you really need to have scenes that are, scenes are based on the character wanting something. They're not based on the author saying, oh, I think I'll write a scene about the character smoking a cigarette and thinking about his life. Um, it's not, um, I'm going to show, I'm going to reveal character by having the character go to the laundromat. That's not a scene. <laughs> the scene is the character wants something and somebody else stands in the way. And it doesn't mean guns and knives necessarily. It means I want A and you want B. Right. That's mm -hmm. a scene. I want A and you want B. And then what happens? 
and then you have action, you have uh, dialogue, you have, uh, if I want A and if there's a lot at stake, first I might try to be nice, then I might threaten, then I might beg, and at the end of the scene, I either get A, which is okay, but if you do that too soon, Cinderella goes to the ball, and that's not so good. I don't get A, which, you know, is, makes for a nice next scene. Or you get what Jack Bickham calls yes, but. Yes, you get but you want, but there are strings. Or what Bickham also calls no and furthermore. No, you don't get what you want, and you've worsened your situation. Okay, good. What can good professional instruction do to improve writer, a writer's skills? I only wish that I'd had it. I wish I'd had a class like the, the ones that you offer. Because I've seen students come in with their... I can't teach talent, and I don't presume to. We have as much talent as we have. But craft is so important. Focus is so important. The elements that you and I have been discussing are really important, and I can teach that. Yes, yeah, so you do. You do it, do it very well. You've been teaching online, as a matter of fact, since 2004. How do regular online classes stack up against our real-time AuthorLink courses? There's no comparison. I just taught a class this afternoon, one of your AuthorLink classes, and all of the students were saying how much they benefited from the one-on-one -on -one time. Because they have between uh, 30 minutes and an hour, based on the course they're taking, just to talk to me, sitting there looking at their screens with their work on the screen, talking about, and it might not even be about the edits, it might be talking about how they can develop their character. One student we found a, a lot of information about her backstory that we didn't know. We found out about her father, you know, and by, by going back to when was she born and what was going on in the country. Um, it's invaluable for me, it's more like teaching a live class for me to have that one-on-one -on -one contact with my students and to do a lecture when they're all giving me feedback because we do lectures as well as one-on-one. -on -one. Right. It's the next best thing to actually having the student there. Yeah. To I love there. it. Yeah, great. Well, we love having you too. People have taken your classes and they say, the people who have taken your classes say they gain more information about writing than anywhere else. How do you feel about writing and teaching? I love teaching, as you know. I love it almost as much as writing. I am not a born teacher. I was told by a college professor that I would never teach because I was too shy and that I just didn't have what it took to communicate to people, and I didn't. But uh, I was offered a job when I was working at the newspaper. Somebody, some education, uh, adult education teacher had dropped out and they needed somebody that night to teach a writing class. And they called me because I'd done some freelance work for them, and they said, would you teach this class? And I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I was really worried about it. And I was scared, and I was shy, and I was so nervous I took my shoes off because I was afraid I'd pass out. <laughs> and in that eight-week class, I had my first student make a sale, and he sold an article to a magazine. Wow. And the bug bit. It changed, it literally changed my life. It's very important to me to teach. And? Not only has that article sold, but some of your students have had some tremendous success. We have, in my local group, we've had uh, two six-book, six-figure deals within two years. We've had lesser deals, but very exciting. We have, um, it's almost 50-50 men and women, a little more, more men. We have, well, you know that's unusual, too, for a woman-led yes. writing group. Yes. We have literary writers. One of my students has won the Hackney Literary Award. Mm. Um, he's a literary writer who drives two hours to take the class. Sherry Petrie, the mystery novelist, who's now signed with my agent, is a workshop member. I have um, my youngest student's 24, my oldest is 75, and every See. decade is represented. Oh, he's a published cowboy poet. Um, a very, very exciting I know, I know you're passionate about yeah. teaching yeah, and writing. Bonnie, thank you so much for talking with us today.